Welcome back, everyone. Live here at Palo Alto, SuperCloud 6. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. Uh, the title of this episode of SuperCloud 6 is AI Innovators, and uh, we're excited to have um, our next guest, Shiraz Patel, head of MongoDB Ventures. Of course, MongoDB, very famous with developers on the database side, and they're writing checks to, to fund developers. Obviously, the developer frenzy, Dave. Shiraz, thanks for coming on theCUBE um, remotely. Uh, from San Francisco. Next time you got to drive down We're in the studio. Come on down. Great to see you. Yeah, great to have, great to be here. Thank you for having me. So um, we're excited to talk to you guys. Also, we'll be at Mongo Local in New York, May second, coming up. You got a big event, kicking off again the again the the groundswell of developer actions, all time high. Certainly on generative AI, has just become really super exciting environment. People being more confident every day. The language models getting better. You guys got vector search on on inside MongoDB now. Full stop shop for developers. A lot of big customers that grow up from developers, but you're writing checks to startups. And uh, sometimes they're small, sometimes they're big. I know you do a lot of hackathons, but you're on the venture side. Can you give us a taste of a, a feeling of what's going on in that community of, of these new ventures? Um, there's a big trend towards funding, founding teams out of the gate. Um, mm -hmm. just, just organic developer growth you're seeing in open source, just a ton of activity. Give us a feel for what you're, what you're writing checks for. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, MongoDB Ventures, we launched it about two years ago, and MongoDB as a company at the time, uh, we had just passed a billion dollars in, in revenue, Atlas was growing nicely, uh, 100,000 plus developers signing up for our product every month, and we looked across our customer base and thought about what's a great way to introduce new and exciting technologies to the customer base, uh, and that was really kind of the impetus for long, launching MongoDB Ventures. Uh, and so the mission of MongoDB Ventures uh, is very aligned with MongoDB's mission, which is to help innovators unleash the power of data and software. Um, so for us, we're looking for new and exciting technologies that really help developers be more productive at their jobs, um, help them work with data better, um, and can help others in our customer base. Uh, in terms of what that means generally, we're looking at a lot of infrastructure software, a lot of developer tools. Um, and to your point, the last uh, year and a half has been very exciting. Uh, been focused a lot on looking at companies building in the AI space, and in particular, uh, companies that are enabling developers, which is our key audience, uh, to build with AI. You know, one of the things we're seeing out there, and that came up earlier this morning on SuperCloud 6 was, and of course we saw that at least a year ago, but it starts to come into visibility now when you start to see the new formula. And the new formula that enterprises are driving towards is end-to-end -end new kinds of systems to power the AI, but it has to be developer-led, right? So, you, so that means a lot. Let's unpack that, Dave, uh, with Shiraz. You got end-to-end, -end, developer centric and first, open source. Okay, so how do you become an enterprise motion end-to-end -end system with a developer-led? So it's a combination of bottoms up growth, but dealing with the data for generative AI is dealing with crown jewels of the company. You don't, haven't seen this movie before, this, just this way, where you have developer bottoms up growth and then you got to deal with core data, okay? Which is a very enterprise motion. Shiraj, unpack that for us. You guys are seeing that uh, at Mongo and what does that mean for the new solutions that are emerging? Yeah, I, actually, I think this is the exact trend as to why we are positioned well as a venture organization. Um, what we're seeing is that really the products that a developer needs to get dangerous and build AI into their applications, even if they're at the enterprise, uh, those products are often startups. Um, a lot, we see a lot of our developers, uh, even within the MongoDB ecosystem, using uh, products like LangChain, like Llama Index, a couple from our portfolio, a company called Nomic, Unstructured. And these are integral products that people need to build AI-infused applications. Uh, now, the data in an enterprise, though, lives in uh, proven database technologies like MongoDB. Um, and that's where the magic of, of the partnership with some of these younger companies uh, really comes into play. And so we work hand-in-hand -hand with them. We figure out what are the points of connectivity um, that we can enable and how do we make it easier for developers uh, to use these new innovative companies uh, with their existing enterprise data and really bring the right context to these AI applications. So Siraj, 
ecosystems have a voice and it's not always a singular voice, but you're serving the developers, developers are serving ecosystem, you're the steward of that ecosystem. So while it may not be you know, direct to uh, say a financial services ecosystem or some other industry, you are the, the beacon for that ecosystem. What is the ecosystem telling you that they need now through that, th that developer voice and those multiple developer voices? What are the patterns that you're discerning over the last you know, year or two? I think uh, anybody that's spending a lot of time in the AI space and talking to enterprise customers in the space, that we all kind of have the same narrative where it felt like last year was a lot of prototypes. Um, people were trying applications for the first time, um, a lot of things like chatbots, uh, a lot of retrieval augmented generation um, and different applications of vector search. Uh, and what we're hearing now is that as people are maturing, uh, they're starting to think about, okay, um, well, if I'm using this model as part of my application, what is the long-term cost going to be of this model? Um, and how am I going to uh, deal with that from a budget perspective? Um, if I'm using this framework, am I confident that this framework is now going to scale? Um, or if I'm introducing uh, AI, uh, AI powers into my application, um, which are by nature probabilistic, how can I design unit tests or different testing um, to make sure that the actual output of the application is as predictable as possible, as well as safe? So if this follow up on that sort of the, the ROI question, you know, benefit over cost, it sounds like there's a real focus on the denominator right now. Um, is that because they've figured out the numerator that the sort of value piece uh, is there still a lot of experimentation or is it because there's pressure for them to actually show a return on their AI experiments? How, how, do, you, how do you think about the, the, the ROI sentiment? I think for some companies uh, with some use cases, the ROI is no. Um, you take developer productivity. Uh, we know how the massive shortage of technical resources there are globally. Um, we can't get enough developers in any enterprise. And so you in, inject a tool um, like what we're seeing with GitHub Copilot or a company called Podium that we've partnered with um, that really increases developer productivity uh, and the ROI is intuitive um, and people understand it. Other use cases, it's a little bit uh, more unknown. People are still trying to figure out, you know, what is the exact ROI going to be on increasing the number of tickets per customer service agent that can be served at once. Um, some of these calculations are a little bit less well-known um, and others are well-known, but I think there's generally a lot of momentum. There's a lot of top-down desire uh, to make sure that teams are using AI and figuring out where they can drive ROI. Siraj, first of all, uh, by the way, some of the names you mentioned, uh, Llama Index, Langchain, uh, Jerry and Harrison are going to be in theCUBE on the 19th as our addendum addition to AI Innovators. So if you're watching, we'll have another supplement coming in next week. Uh, How Issue's got a bunch of panels we're putting on together here. So you'll see them here on theCUBE. Um, I got to ask you, as you look at the landscape, you're looking at deals, you're looking at uh, the trends and who to invest in, um, who are the AI Innovators? If you can encapsulate kind of the pattern that's emerging Obviously, RAG is hot, the, re the retrieval side of it with vector embeds is only one, that's context. But you got other enrichment of other data sources enriching vector embeds and, and, and other things. You got transaction data, Dave has been all over that in his research. What are the patterns? What is an AI innovator that you guys are looking at and seeing? What are some of the early signs of what that entrepreneur looks like? What that success case looks like? What's the team formation? What's just a high level uh, uh, observation? Yeah, I, I will say that from a venture standpoint, we focus, again, on infrastructure as well as products aimed at developers, not necessarily the application layer. Um, I think at the application layer, our insight is, again, limited because we don't focus from a venture standpoint, but essentially that the cycle between when an application becomes dominant and when it potentially becomes disrupted um, is decreasing. Uh, and your AI innovators or your innovators in general are now using AI as a way to increase the velocity and the amount of disruption um, that they have within their application. So I'll, I'll give you an example again from our portfolio. Um, we have a company called Payload. Uh, it's content management system. It's headless, developer first, um, has seen tremendous open source adoption. 
Uh, and it really grew initially off the developer first nature of the product. Uh, now, beginning last year, all of a sudden they started infusing a lot of AI into the product and they've seen an accelerant of that adoption and disruption. So for example, now what, when I'm writing content for my website, um, they have an AI co-pilot that's gonna help auto-complete whatever I'm writing. Or if I need an image for my website, you can actually generate that image using AI instead of bringing that image into your content management system. Um, so we're seeing savvy entrepreneurs that are able to input AI into their products, uh, no matter where they started a couple of years ago. On the uh, innovation side of the infrastructure, um, AI ops is a top conversation. We're seeing a lot about that. DevSecOps teams are looking at specifically on the platform engineering side, AI automating a lot of the data wrangling, data management piece of it, data hygiene, um, which was once you know, a data science exercise. The data engineer set the table, so to speak, and let the AI run. So that platform engineering is getting a lot of AI assistance. Um, where does that go? How do you guys see that happen? Because this is going to help a lot. In fact, we showed numbers early on before we came at our opening segment around some of the, the, the market data, rocket research data, that Gen AI is pulling up cloud orchestration, Kubernetes, container management. Those are like the hot areas around where Gen AI is pulling up. That tells us that there's a lot of DevOps work going on uh, in, the, in the stack there. What are you seeing? Uh, what's the innovation there? Because it seems to be a lot of action. Yeah, I think in general, what we're seeing is that projects that require um, significant de developer effort, whether it's DevOps or otherwise, um, major infrastructure changes uh, where in the past, you've been bottlenecked by the cost of rewriting application code um, and the cost of modernizing uh, an infrastructure or application. Um, you now see that people are starting to realize that those costs are going down. Um, with the productivity gains that developers get from AI, um, we think it's going to massively accelerate how quickly enterprises are able to modernize their applications and move off of legacy infrastructure into more modern infrastructure. Um, I think that's one side of it. The other side of it is the uh, velocity of new applications is going to increase tremendously, not only, again, because developers are becoming more productive, um, but also as our definition of who is a developer expands. Um, right now I can go to AI, ask them to create a base application for me, and they're going to produce something that's pretty good. Um, and so we think who is considered a developer will continually expand as the AI gets better um, at, at developing software. So Mongo's obviously done very well um, in the developer world, uh, being a, a, a system, an operational database. There's certainly a, a, a lot of discussion, and we've seen this, the rise of a lot of these analytical systems, and there's a lot of discussion we've been talking about today here at SuperCloud 6 of you know, bringing analytics and trans transactions together. I mean, that's not anything new, uh, but from an investor standpoint, what are you seeing there? Uh, is it something that people are, are, are driving you towards? I mean, obviously Mongo has announced some extensions into you know, analytics, but as you see LLMs and AI bring in less structured data, what are you seeing there in terms of, is it going to be in your view, the, the, the database, you know, big database vendors that extend that or are there investment opportunities that can complement what you guys are doing today as part of that ecosystem? Uh, well, I am certainly biased, um, but I have to say that what, what we've seen is that customers don't want to manage an additional database if they don't have to. Um, there's certain requirements for these workloads uh, that are coming in based on applications that are being built. Um, and as we've added things like our vector search technology, uh, we've been able to meet the requirements uh, for those applications. So I think it's, it's one of those things where incumbents uh, have the right to win. Um, and certainly our customers look to us to solve an increasing amount of their data, data problems before they're going to look to add another data system to uh, to their stack, um, just in terms of total cost of ownership, simplicity, and a, a good high quality developer experience, as well as uh, reducing the complexity of their architectures. Um, but to your point, we are also seeing the trend that developers are asked to do more. 
Um, so developers are asked to embed analytical charts into their applications increasingly. Um, developers are now asked uh, to add search, add similarity search, um, add recommendation engines to applications. So as developers are asked to do more, um, the data platforms that they rely on need to keep up with that increased responsibility. Um, and that's very aligned with uh, our data developer platform. Yeah, I mean, it's almost like da you know, data management because not quite like security yet with all these different you know, platforms and tools, but it's getting there. There's a lot of fragmentation and, uh, and that yeah. causes problems for customers. Yeah. So Raj, we, we really appreciate you coming on theCUBE and spending time with us. Uh, for the final minute we have left, um, give a plug for the venture group there. What are you looking for investments? Do you invest uh, for profit or is it more for ecosystem development or both? Or And how does someone know whether they should knock on your door to get a check? Do you follow, do you lead, do you throw seed out there? Give us a quick uh, overview of how you guys engage. No, I appreciate it. Um, we invest from formation stage through growth stage. Uh, we are investing in our ecosystem more broadly. Um, so it's a, it's a combination of strategic and financial reasons uh, that we invest in. And the best way to think about whether we're a good investor for you um, is if you're going after the developer ecosystem and other data practitioners, that's the ecosystem that we care tremendously about. Um, and any company solving a real problem for the constituents of that ecosystem, we're interested in talking with and working with. All right, well, thanks so much and congratulations on your mission. Good to see more strategic and targeted checks uh, for the developer community. Obviously, we, as we believe, developers will set the agenda. They are the canary in the coal mine, so to speak. That combined with the generative AI wave makes for the perfect storm. So uh, we'll see you and the team in New York City on May 2nd for Mongo Local. Put a little plug in for your team over there. Uh, MongoDB has evolved from the developer open source product to uh, mega enterprise hit with Atlas. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me, John and Dave. Okay, SuperCloud AI Innovators continues. We'll be right back with another startup founder coming back on here to talk about the future of AI infrastructure. We'll be right back, live in Palo Alto. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We'll be right back.